the hood's up again. You know what that means, another repair. So recently our uh, top power steering tube, um, I think it's the low pressure tube, has started leaking uh, pretty profusely. Um, it's a pretty difficult uh, repair typically, uh, but possible. Um, so let me kind of show you what we're working with this morning. So this line coming out the top of the power steering pump uh, is leaking. It leaks here and, and it leaks on both sides. And uh, I've kind of had a suspicion for a little while that maybe my power steering cooler that I put in here, uh, maybe it's too restrictive and it's causing uh, maybe too much pressure in the system. Um, so I bought a actual power steering uh, cooler to try to replace the one on the front with. Um, and I'm gonna replace this top tube as well. The challenging part, there's a couple challenging things, um, but uh, just getting it kind of in and out is hard, but where it goes into the rack and pinion down there, uh, kind of center on the screen here, uh, is very difficult to reach. Um, most DIYers have to reach it from the top here. So there's all these, you know, cooling tubes and stuff to get out of the way. Um, I've got to get under the car because I have a subframe drop. There might just be a chance that I can get to the back fitting um, from the bottom. So I'm gonna go see if that's possible. <clears throat> so it is pretty tight, but that fitting right there, that nut that you can see kind of center, that is the fitting that I need to get out. And to me, it looks like I'm gonna be able to get to it. I know one of the hard parts is getting the, the new one back in. And I do remember when I replaced this rack and pinion recently, that that was a challenge, was getting that, that fitting dead setter there uh, back in. But we're gonna give it a shot today. <clears throat> All right, so in order to replace this uh, power steering cooler, I gotta take the bumper cover off. So gotta take the winch off, which is simple as removing these pins and uh, disconnecting these quick disconnects. If you're interested in uh, finding out how I got this winch on here, uh, check out my video history. There's a, a video pretty much showing the wire up and the front hitch receiver build. Now I'm gonna go through and uh, undo all the bolts and zip ties holding this thing on. I have to disconnect my front spotlights here. So I don't know if it's possible, but like I said, one of my theories was that this power steering, it's actually a transmission cooler I took off of some truck at the at a, the salvage yard. And uh, I don't know, one of my theories is that maybe this is too restrictive for some reason. So I'm gonna replace it with a an actual uh, Hayden power steering cooler. And this is my uh, transmission cooler setup for those who aren't aware. We got transmission fluid coming from the transmission. Um, I'm trying to remember, I believe I have it running through transmission coolers first to get it down as aggressively as possible. Then it runs through the radiator. I didn't bypass that system. That way on cooler days, the radiator actually brings the temp back up a little bit before it sends it back in, which I think is important for cooler weather. Um, that way your transmission fluid's not too cool. Uh, but so far it's been working pretty well. It's running on a, uh, a thermostat that kicks it on at 180 degrees and I can manually turn it on by moving this alligator clip onto the positive.
and it moves a pretty good amount of air through there. Unfortunately, my pilot's weakness is gearing, so when we're uh, doing steep climbs and whatnot, the transmission temperature can climb, so I have to be really aggressive. Um, these are actually two Hayden uh, transmission coolers as well right there. So you can see here, <clears throat> the power steering cooler that I bought is a lot more simple. Uh, and it looks like it has, uh, you know, except for the fittings right here, it looks like it has a lot thicker tubing going throughout it. So I'm hoping that that maybe alleviates some pressure. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna mount it though. So it bothers me a little bit that the way it's mounted uh, doesn't allow it to be square to the vehicle. That being said, it's on there, plenty firm enough, and um, I'm hoping that this has less restriction on the power steering um, and maybe will alleviate any you know future uh, leakage from these uh, pressure or these uh, power steering hoses. Um, I need to disconnect that sensor. And then we need to move to the different brackets that kind of hold the, the hose on. I see one right behind there. So I'm gonna work on that right now. It's gonna be a little bit hard to have a camera on it. So behind the sensor there, there was this uh, clip. It was a, uh, this band just kind of goes around this rubber grommet here with one 10 millimeter screw. So that came out pretty easy. Um, not sure again where this one hooked in, but I never bothered to put it back. So um, I'm gonna move, I think there's one more bracket and then there's the end that goes into the rack and pinion. I gotta get both of those out. I was able to pull off the bracket here, uh, kind of similar. I'm sure it's got a 10 millimeter bolt, but it wasn't reconnected from my last job. Shame on me. And then I've got to get that nut that's closest the fitting that's going into the rack and pinion, I gotta get that unscrewed. Um, that'll be the last thing holding it in except for the top bolts, but I'm not worried about the top bolts. So let's see what we can do here. Well, after a uh, lot of uh, tight corner turning with the uh, just the straight end 14 millimeter wrench, I was able to get the, um, the end of the power steering tube off. Oh. Oh. see it hanging right there I'm gonna let it drain for a little bit and uh, start getting the new hose prepped so it'll be a little bit of a challenge getting it routed back in there and then getting the uh, this uh, bolt started it's gonna be a challenge as well all right, so the last piece holding this thing in is this top bolt off the power steering pump. And then we can figure out how to remove this. So it took like a little loop and twist to get it out of there. And the bends did not look like they were the same at first. Uh, but it looked like just one one bend was kind of crumpled up. That way it would fit in the box. So that should be fine. So now I got to move this sensor over. All right, it looks like my cheater bar just doesn't quite make it. So let's give it a little tug here. See if we can get it to move. Yes, we did. All right, so we got the new green O-ring on there. Got it cleaned up. We're gonna screw this in. All right, so I was able to get the uh, bottom portion of the power steering line, the hard line back into the rack and pinion with, uh, relatively, with relative ease. I was worried about cross-threading it, but turned out that that didn't happen. 
I was careful with the threads and I got it all buttoned up. So the last thing I need to do now is uh, refasten some of the different uh, retention straps and plug in the sensor. I already went ahead and buttoned up the top and put on a new O-ring up here. Uh, so once I get all that put back together, I just need to top off the power steering fluid. So I think I'm gonna leave you there with the uh, repair pretty much complete. And uh, now I'm gonna pivot into some cosmetic repairs um, as we prepare for All Wheel Drive Festival. Thank you guys for uh, watching. I hope this helps you out. Thanks for supporting the channel. As always, catch you on the next adventure.